guys, this week we got our iPhones in hand. What do we think about them? How is the new iOS 7 treating us? Chilla chimes in with a little bit of tips and tricks with that. And House of Cards, big time at the Emmys. Netflix finally legitimate. All this and more. Awesome cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. If it gets too dark, because I think the sun's going to set on me, let me know, and I'll, uh, if you see me moving around to get a light. <laughs> so, yeah, do you have any kind of front lighting going on? Not right now, but I can make it happen. All right, we'll just beat the dark. Okay. Hey, guys, it's that time again. It's time for the awesome cast. It's time to geek out. I'm Mike Sorg here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I got glass back on my face. It's been glorious the last few days um, with my time away from it. Uh, but but the big news this week, we're going to go all Apple-y. Of course, we got new iPhones in hand for a couple of us here. Uh, but joining me this week, of course, is Norm Hulesman. He's got his head down, but he's, he's been able to pick it up for uh, for a couple minutes for us to join us on the Awesome Cast. He's uh, involved with PodCamp Pittsburgh, PodCampPittsburgh.com, and we had a great talk uh, uh, late last week about podcasting. That's right. Thanks Man. for having me back. Awesome. And uh, also with us is Cynthia Klosky, BigBigDesign.com, at Cynthia Klosky on the Twitters. How are you doing tonight? I'm groovy. How are you? Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, let's get right into. Uh, oh, and also you, you can drop us a line. Let us know what you think about you know, your iPhones, Google products, whatever. At contact at awesomecast.com. Hit us up on Google Plus on Facebook uh, at awesomecast on Twitters, and uh, let us know what you think about some of the stuff we're talking about or stuff you think is awesome. And uh, you can also join us live at live.sorgatronmedia.com and tell us uh, your opinions and awesome things there as well. So the first, I think most of our awesome of the week thing of the week is going to be unless you guys have a very varying opinion than i do on this um is well first of all iphone 5s came out uh friday no pre-order you had to go to the store um and and cindy i know you picked one up too i did i um didn't pick one up the first day because i am allergic to standing in line mm. so what i actually did and this is a, a tip for anyone who wants one now, because there are still lines, at least in Shady Side, which is where I got mine. Um, is uh, you can even do it like the day that you want to pick it up. Like go to the Apple.com, pick your phone, set it all up, pay, and then an hour later they'll text you and say your phone's ready, and you just go and you walk right past the line. It feels great. It's like you know, uh, <laughs> the bouncers come let you straight in, and they do. And then the next guy up helps you get your phone. It, you know, and and that I wondered about that because they have the thing with your app that you can more or less uh, buy something, and even to the point where if it's something smaller, you can walk in, grab the thing, scan it, and walk out without talking to a person. So I wonder if that worked, considering this was like a new release. So this is mm -hmm. something you did through the website, though. Oh, sure. I just went to the um, Apple dot com, uh, and and just did all the regular stuff like I normally would. But I said I wanted to pick it up at the store, and you'd say which store you want. They tell you if they have the color that you want or not. Uh, and if they don't, they'll tell you when it'll come in. But the one I wanted, because I didn't want to wait, <laughs> was available. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I got to the store. I saw the line. I thought, oh, shoot, everybody else had this bright idea. But I asked the people online, so you ordered online, right? And they, they said no. And so I waltzed past them. And I walked in. And, um, and then I did, you know, there is, they have people stationed there to stop you. So you can't just kind of wander in. Um, but then once they stop you and you say, I, I ordered online, then they grab the next phone person. So, like, you get to cut in line. Basically, you stand, you're stand, you getting the next person that the person who's standing in line outside would have gotten. Awesome. Now, you know, I had, uh, I had the bright idea of going down 
the South Hills Village uh, Friday morning. I had the opportunity. Uh, both I and, and, and my wife uh, were upgrading our phones. So I'm like, okay, let me see if I can get both of them. Maybe I'll only get stuck with one. Who knows? Um, and I was greeted by a line uh, uh, for you guys on video that looked like this. Um, so... <laughs> Pretty long line wrapped around. They had them, you know, cordoned off, you know, in the middle of the hallway. Uh, and, and I was back there in that little line that went off. But the but nice thing is, like, back there, like, kind of back behind that pillar, um, and it's a pretty substantial line for you guys on audio, um, there, by the time, like, you know, I got there, I probably stood there for 10 minutes tops, to be honest, uh, because they were going by and they had a book with UPC stickers for everything they had in stock. So they get to you and say, okay, which phone do you want? And I, you know, they'd be like, oh, AT&T or Verizon, uh, what, you know, what sizes do you have? What colors? And they'd give you a sticker on a card and, you know, that you should have one on the way in there. By the time they got to me, they had like 16 gigabyte at and T's, so I'm like, well, I want to go 32s for both the phones I'm looking for. So I just, I just kind of bolted off the, off of that. Um, so then I go down, <laughs> down the mall because I, I had this hunch because I passed a Verizon store that had this like kind of little bit of a line going on. Um, and actually, there's another shot right there of where I was, and there's our, our little, uh, 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 you know, sticker guy that was uh, asking people what kind of phone they wanted in advance here. But I go down the AT&T store, and this is all they had. Like, ten people tops, right, in line. Um, and you know they're going to have the right version of the phone. And they said, yeah, we got everything, every size, um, in space gray, which is black or whatever, you know. Um, so, jackpot. And even by the time I got in there, there was like three people in line behind me. They double-checked what size they were looking for. Um, and they're like, oh, you're looking for two of them? Because they originally they were like, as long as there's a line, we can only let you buy one. You have to get back in line. But they checked, make sure nobody else wanted a 32 gigabyte. And I picked up both of them for my wife and I. So, um, and they were super awesome. They, they tried to upsell the hell out of me for uh, the AT&T Next program. Um, and, I, and this is this was interesting. Did you know, uh, what, what are you on, uh, Cindy? What, what, what service are you on? I have AT&T. You have AT&T, too. They, apparently, they've upgraded or updated the uh, your contract from 19 months to be able to upgrade to 24 months. Mm-hmm. Which That's I think, true. Which is, I guess, is this is the push for them to do the AT&T next, right? Um, I wonder if that's going to affect me in, like, two years when I go in and get that iPhone at that point. Mm. So, I don't know. But a big push there, and even I was in a Verizon store later that day. Uh, actually, you know, looking because my, my MiFi went went on me that I've been using for my Google Glass. And I wanted to see if they could help me. They 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 couldn't. So I was standing in line and kind of observing the people coming in and getting their iPhones. Um, and again, big push for the Verizon Edge program for them. So that that this is I think this was a big day for them uh, in awareness for those kinds of programs, especially for people with iPhones because you know a few of them I think want to get them every year and get the new you know hotness with that. Uh, Norm, you didn't upgrade, did you? Mind of lost Norm. Norm, are you with us? Okay. He's out buying an iPhone right he's now. He's out buying an iPhone. He's ordering right now. I think he's using your trick right now from the list of things. <laughs> oh, he just dropped off. Um, so what do you think of it so far? I mean, we, you're upgrading again from a 4. I came, I came from a 4S myself. Um, and I know the biggest push for me to upgrade was, you know, well, if I'm going to get a new one, I'm going to get the newest one. And I really need, I was really feeling kind of cramped with 16 gigabytes, so I needed the upgrade anyways. Um, what, what, what's your experience been so far? So far, uh, so the, the reason I was able, um, I was up for upgrading way back in like March or February even, but you know, the rumors were out that there was going to be a phone maybe in June. So I said, mm -hmm. ah, I can wait till June. And then it's like, no, it's not until maybe August. And then, okay, now it's September. So I, um, have been, have been fighting myself for a long time, but what I'm finding now that I have it, um, it's so hard to differentiate the phone because again, remember it's such a big jump. It's hard to differentiate what I like that's in iOS seven and what I like that's in iOS, uh, that's in the phone design. Um, I do. I am really digging the thumb login bit. Yes. Uh, although I also, do you, I mean, do you like that part? I do. I I really do because I, I I'm the kind of person like you know we talked about with Crappy a couple weeks ago, um, where you know I, you have that passcode for like a couple of days and you just get so annoyed with it you turn it off right. Uh, and for those that haven't checked, you can train up to five fingers. I've trained my main 
you know, index and thumbs. So Me even, too. Me I too. made sure because I want to make sure when I'm like driving in the car, I can reach out and 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 unlock it to do whatever I need to do, right? Um, and that that makes sense. But you can you can get five fingers in there, and actually Missy uh, actually programmed her finger in too. So oh yeah, but that okay. actually works so, out pretty well. Something. Um, the, uh, every now and again, I'll be at a, um, doing like check-in for an event that we're hosting like via Eventbrite. And so like my phone will have the stuff on it for people to pay. And so I have to give people my passcode for them to be able to log in. But I'm thinking now I can just check, put their finger in for the duration of the evening and then wipe their finger later. So I can let, let someone borrow my phone for a short time to use it as like a little check-in device. I guess really so the only concern would be you have to make sure... Um, in some way, it's not going to buy stuff on iTunes, but that doesn't really make sense. I guess <laughs> they're why too would they, busy right? when we're doing these events. They don't have any time to be buying stuff on iTunes. Exactly. Um, exactly. Or even if they did, maybe I could just turn it off. I don't know. That's a good thought. That's an alert. Thank you for the alert. <laughs> but so, but so here's the thing about it: is that now, okay, so now with my phone, they can, you know, my phone has already in it all the location and tracking stuff. So the world, or in the NSA, or you know, Big Brother knows where I am. And now they know it's really me because I have my phone, my thumb there, and I'm the but only one with they? that thumb. But do they? Because you could have put whatever thumb in there, right? But surely it tracks, it logs which finger was used. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, as far as and then I... they could actually see, I mean, they can, that's one thing the police are good at is actually taking your thumbprint. Yeah, as exactly. far as I know, they, like, they should like, have that. Confidence I know. I know there was the concern of well, now the NSA can break into Apple and get all your thumbprints. Supposedly, when you put your thumbprint on here, it's stored on the phone and not on their servers. We'll see how truthful that is. I'm sure the hackers yeah, will figure that out. They've told us so many things at this point. I'm just yeah. not. Yeah, it's just like you accept it or you don't. You're like, my stuff's out there. NSA is going to get it anyways. They were going to anyways if I didn't already put my stuff out there. That's what they. That's what they're good at. Right? Maybe I can prove that I'm innocent because I clearly was somewhere else. Exactly. You got you got this thing, GPS on your phone. I mean, I think this is the ultimate al alibi in the long run because we're checking in the four squares. We're checking in. We got our Fitbits GPSing our route as we jog. Um, I think the personal cloud may be the thing to screw you up or, or damn you, you know, or, you know, or save you at this time. At, at this I point. predict that there will be an NCIS episode using this as a plot device in about five weeks. There's already one about a uh, anonymous app. What was this on Bones? I think a couple years ago, like some like anonymous love app where, and, and there's one of these for Facebook, I think, um, where you'd say if your friend. You know, you have a list of people that are nearby. You say whether they're attractive or not, and it buzzes whenever they're actually nearby. You know, mm. and that was like implicated mm -hmm. in a murder, like you know, something crazy <laughs> like that. I mean, they've already done it. It looked really hokey when they did it, um, and it's like, wow, somebody did, did, has somebody done that app? And I'm sure there's something out there like that. Um, it seems like a huge privacy concern, you know, in that case, but. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, you know, I, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, getting the Nexus 7, I was like, oh my god, this is fast, I can do so much with it. Um, I'm kind of having the same experience uh, with this, uh, with the iPhone 5S. Uh, it, even from the 4S, it was, it was a big jump in speed. Um, it's one of those, I, I kept saying that I didn't feel the pressure to upgrade because I didn't feel like my phone was dog slow. Which I, pr I probably would have changed after I actually used one of these in a store if I decided not to upgrade. Um, so and I'm sure you're seeing an even even bigger. Yeah, particularly increase. like right now I'm living up here in Butler. This is my this is where I grew up actually. This house that I'm in right now isn't that lovely? Nice. This is my mom's house. <laughs> um, uh, up here, the, we don't have the fast network speeds that we do uh, in Pittsburgh and in other cities. Mm -hmm. So so I'm noticing the connectivity difference when I'm down there versus up here yeah. but the phone itself just operates much faster it just thinks faster doing any particular thing looking something up opening an app any of that it's really noticeable yeah i mean i definitely started seeing because we did the ios update uh last week with our phones you know, even though we had them on them for two days and we we started noticing like as you do that uh the new multitask where you see all the screens it seemed to take another extra second you know uh, to do stuff like that again, nothing like real horrible. Real, really, you know, versus like a lot of other like cheaper phones. I think it still kicks a lot of ass uh, as far as the iPhone 4s. 
Um, so I think, let me double check. Norm, are you with us? And I don't have his audio. Does oh. he know sign language? Uh, yeah, oh, he's looking. He's getting closer to the computer. That's not it. Uh, we'll see if he comes back. He's been having a lot of trouble with his microphone there. So, um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep an ear and, and hopefully he can get back in with us here. Um, but, uh, but, uh, um, over, over the weekend, of course, big numbers. Um, I did see a few people picking up five C's, especially at Verizon. I think I even heard a couple people online saying they were getting five C's at the Apple store, um, which still amazes. I mean, it, it does, but it doesn't amaze me, you know, that this, this was a big part of the push was the 5c we've seen ads for the 5c during during football this weekend and i don't think we've seen any for the for the 5s you know um no, it's not a mass media product really not the same way no, no. I, I i keep going back to when they were unleashing this phone and comparing it to the other phone this is the mac pro of phones you know mm -hmm. this has got this you know it probably has more horsepower than you're going to use right now unless you went out and dropped the seven bucks on Inf infinity blade three i gotta tell you infinity blade one looks amazing on this thing versus my iP ipad at this point um hell i'm playing grand theft auto three on this thing um so I, you know this is kind of a future proofing i thought um love the fingerprint um and for the i wanted to kind of demonstrate for those on on video uh, you know as far as the fingerprint goes, um, this is how easy it is. And hopefully this works as I turn this around, we'll see. So if you have your phone sleeping, you just kind of, you know, tap for home and hold it there and it reads and gets you right in. That's how quick I went in. That was like a split second, right? And uh, have you find it that easy, Cindy? Oh yeah, it's great. It's fantastic, mm -hmm. particularly if, um uh, I'm, uh, and then you can do it with either hand. Cause like you just said, you can use any of the fingers that you've got. I thought I would only use my right hand, but like immediately I was wanted to use all the four fingers that you said, the same four. Mm -hmm. So it's just convenient. Awesome. Check in, Norm. Are you with us? Nope. Not with us. His video looks amazing. Maybe that's because he's not saying. What if he, I mean, so you can't just use the built-in mic, hey? Okay? I guess not. Uh, yeah, you tried using the like the iMac mic, probably not because he's 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 mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Norm. I feel bad. He's had so so many computer problems with this last week when we tried to do this and and this week. Um, well, uh, well, we'll figure out what's going on with him here. Actually, we have a video. Uh, Chilla has follow has followed suit with uh, what AJ started last week. On a little bit of a show-off video, he's going to show off a few uh, of the features, a few of the changes with iOS 7. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a couple minutes here and uh, go check out that. And hopefully when we get back here, uh, we'll have Norm in his full audio, video, visual glory to, so he can chime in on the changes with that. Uh, we'll be right back after Chilla's video here. Hey, guys. Chilla coming at you. Um, hopefully Sword gets a copy of this. Um, so today I'm going to go over the new iPhone. Um, as you can see up on my screen here, I got, I got the new iPhone 5. Um, comes with the new flash, as you can see right there. Actually sets for a bunch of different tonal settings for, for depending on how you're taking your photo and in low light. Um, as well as the new fingerprint sensor. So you'll see right there I can touch my finger. I'm going to touch the wrong one to begin with. You'll be able to see in the video. It'll actually say try again, and if I use one of the correct fingers in pretty much any way, shape, or form, it will actually unlock. So I can unlock my phone, uh, not a problem with my finger. I've actually programmed uh, three of my fingers. You can program up to five. Um, one of the other major updates is uh, the front-facing camera. Obviously, you can uh, test this on your own device, but if I flip the front facing camera over I get a lot better tone um, it is it is full I think 1080p uh, resolution just flip that back around um, obviously I can take a video you'll notice that in the video you now have the option to snap a photo um, when you're taking your video you can stop that um, you also have a slow-mo setting uh, this works well. Uh, one of the tests I was trying to do earlier, which I actually can't play back the video correctly, 
uh, doing the screen capture program is, but um, you can take a slow motion video and it'll actually record in slow motion. It looks through the viewer as it's normal. Um, and when it plays back, it will play back in slow motion. Like I said, unfortunately, I can't. Um, oh, look at that. I can't um, play back the slow mo via the screen recording software I have. But um, one of the other things is, is there's also a boast, burst photo mode. Um, you can tap down. This will be interesting. Get them all in there and hold down and you'll see the number bouncing up at the bottom. That's actually the number of photos that were just taken. When you go uh, into your photo app, you'll actually see um, that it burst. Uh, let's see here, I don't know if this will come up on the screen or not. No, unfortunately it won't. But you can actually go through um, a whole slew of photos, pick out your favorite ones, um, and go from there. So hopefully you guys got the iPhone. Uh, maybe some of you didn't. Maybe some of you are waiting for the device uh, to be delivered. Uh, most of the other other features are the same. There's some some better uh, photo settings for when you take a panoramic. Um, other than that, everything else is iOS 7 related. I know we went over a lot of that last week. Um, I'm sure we'll be coming over a lot more. Um, the App Store, I don't have any apps that have been updated recently for 64-bit. Um, those submissions just went in uh, last week. I think it was last Tuesday, a week ago today, by the time you're seeing this. Um, so hopefully we see some major improvements with some 64-bit games and applications maybe save us some battery life. Um, I've been getting excellent battery life out of this device. As you can see, I'm at 77%. I did recharge today at noon. But even for, I don't know, what, seven hours now, I'm doing pretty good for 77%. Uh, so I'll let Sorg take back over. I know I'm sure he has a lot to go over. Maybe some of the new service devices or uh, the new Microsoft announcements from today. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks, Chilla, for that video. Yeah, great, great show off there. And he actually brought up a few things I didn't even think about. I ain't even tested the... 100 the the slow motion thing yet uh but that front facing camera uh one thing i was trying to do more video with the 4s towards the end there and my problem was i hated to use the front facing i wanted to use the other one to shoot like myself like webcam style for some of those unboxings i've been doing lately but i can't see myself you know and, and i end up, end up with everything out of focus or something like that um i did an unboxing for loot crate uh just yesterday uh, and, and just having that front-facing camera, it looked amazing. Pulling it up in Final Cut and everything uh, looked really great. Really kind of put the Google Glass to shame because it was full 1080. Um, it, it, it looks tremendous. This is like this is exactly why I got a bigger, uh, uh, bigger phone, 32 gig, because I need that room because I want to do more stuff like that. And while even while this video was going on, I did the slow motion and just did a little bit of like you know throw you know having my pho phone go in and out like this and, and you guys might have heard here live i was laughing a little bit because it looks so ridiculous um so that's going to be a lot of fun do you imagine yin's team last set, set, like hey. second city television kind of ridiculous <laughs> that kind of a, like there do you remember second city they used to do this like 3d thing where they would do oh, oh yeah. like wayne's world <laughs> oh they did too that's wayne's right. world they go whoa yeah we were we were doing that on the on the roller coaster at kennywood a couple weeks ago actually um but i yeah i the, it came out uh, just just a little bit before the 5s did. They're like, okay, with all the slow mo functions and everything, this thing is on par with a GoPro camera. Except I'm not gonna, you know, go swimming with the damn thing, right? Um, but could you could you imagine doing that at Yin's team next next year, Norm? I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, so Norm, you uh, it, it, you have an upgrade. You're still on on what the 4s or? Yeah, I'm still using the 4S, although this week I smashed the screen. Uh, so um, like the new T-Mobile commercials, I've got like band-aids on my fingers uh, as I've been using my phone this week. Um, but uh, no, I was planning on upgrading, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about upgrading iOS 7 on the 4S, honestly. My brother did it on his 4, mm -hmm. and his performance is really bad, and I upgraded on my iPad, uh, the new iPad, iPad 3, whatever, and I definitely can tell the performance is um 
is is slower. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah I'm, pl- I'm definitely planning on upgrading soon. So, yeah, I'm, you guys had to like invite me on when I'm the only, you know, <laughs> kid who doesn't have the cool the stuff. Norm so. into it. Um, but yeah, I, this, the camera stuff looks amazing. I've been taking a few pictures, that few videos and everything. Um, it looks, I mean, I, I thought the forest looked, looked great to begin with. Um, and it looks, it look it does look that much better. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun with that here, around here. I think I think you're gonna see a lot of kind of on the spot shoots with us um, when I can't drag one of these big cameras like I have here uh, around with me. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so um, I wanted to get more. Let's talk a little more iOS. Uh, Norm, you said you've tried it on the iPad. Of course, we have both have it with our new phones. Um, how are you guys liking it so far? What do you think, Norm? <laughs> It's fine. I don't love all the icons. Um, I mean, the flat design is cool. It's now you're a designer by trade. Starting. Yeah, I mean, I think it, I think it looks good. Um, I, you know, the the screen features that they have, where you can you know rotate and the background moves in the background, and the the typefaces. You know, everything. You know, they're trying to make everything easier to read uh, in terms of text. Uh, you know, less clutter. I really like where Apple's going with you know this the refresh and with Mavericks in terms of eliminating some of the Apple design stuff like with the address book and the calendar and like just, just their basic programs. I, I like that cleaner approach for sure. Um, so some of that stuff I think is great, but yeah, you know, like some of the icons, they eh, it just just feels like um, you know it's just what the the current flavor of the moment. Um, so so yeah, I was talking to somebody else about it today. Their 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 impression was like. Some some minor things are great. Some improvements are great, but uh, everything else is just the same but different. Mm-hmm. Like instead of swiping to the right, you swipe up now, or you know. So, uh, I haven't I haven't given it some real hard tests yet. All my apps seem to be working. Everything seems to be working fine. Yep. But yeah, there's just a slightly uh, noticeable performance uh, slowdown on yeah. the iPad. The biggest problems uh, I- I've seen um, is with video. It seems. Uh, my, my mother upgraded uh, her iPhone 4, I think. Maybe she got oh, she got 4S, I think. And uh, she tried to FaceTime me, and there was no audio coming from her end. Um, I've been doing Google Hangout with the guys uh, for the wrestling stuff, and my front-facing camera shows up like... Um, we, we, well, it kind of looks like we kind of attributed to when you have like a channel you flip to on old cable systems and it was that multicolored line, but you sort of see the picture kind of situation. That seems to be what's happening. I don't know if that's an app thing or what. Um, so, uh, and, and other than that, actually my 5S restarts every once in a while. And I haven't had that, but I've only had it for a day. Yeah, I, it was That's like weird. like just about after a day, I started noticing it. Macy says hers has done it a couple times, um, so I'm hoping that's a bug. But then again, we did just get the first ones off of the uh, assembly line, so you never know. Um, but I'm not worried. I mean, it becomes a problem. You go to the Apple Store and they'll swap you up, right? So I, I'm not really too concerned about that. Um, uh, Cindy, what was uh, what are your OS thoughts? Well, um, so to, to Norm's point about the flat design, that the previous sort of look that they were doing on all of Apple, all of Mac stuff, the skeuomorphic, always really just set my teeth on edge. I have hated it. <laughs> I've hated it when we did it at Next. I hated it when Apple did it. I just have always hated it. So to me, this is, I don't know, it's like a, a weight has been lifted from my chest, to be honest with you. So, so I like it. Um, and then as far as it just looks really bright and different in that sort of a, a way. But I am I feel like I will catch on. My eyes will catch on in a little bit. I'm just I'm I just feel so relieved not to look at torn edges of pages anymore. Kind of <laughs> my, my biggest thing is it, it's it's kind of a you're you. It doesn't look like it belongs if you use a lot of Mac stuff. Right. Like, mm-hmm. but then to... you know when if you look if you look back, I had reason recently to look back at like some old web things from 1996 when everything was brand new, and like that stuff at the time was sort of like, well, here's this is what the web looks like, and now we would look at them and be like, oh my god, did children make this? You know, <laughs> that's true, that's true. I, I, but I mean, I so so, and I can't remember much of the design elements they're they're talking about with Mavericks, um, but it, it seems like you know more and more a lot of the the design aspects have come over into our Mac OS. If you're a Mac user, 
Uh, so I wonder how many of the new designs happening on iOS are now going to start translating over. Mm. Like oh, I, I think, think a lot. It, they are me, looking for a common. My understanding was that uh, they are coming to sort of a there. There will be a meeting of from two directions. Mm -hmm. that, that was kind of how I understood it. If I've been reading the articles right, mm -hmm. Norm. Yeah, I kind of felt like finally it's oh they're finally catching up to what Google's been doing for the past six months or yeah. more. Uh, it's you know changing those graphics and the the whole trend of flat design. It's Apple's not leading this by any means. So. Yeah. Um, it may feel like it because it's one of the biggest, hottest things at the moment. But um, you know, in web design, flat has been kind of like the new, the new thing. So, um, so, so you, you know, you'll never hear someone say Web 2.0 anymore. It's all flat. So yeah. everybody probably knows that. That's not news. So, so if we're looking at these apps, I know I, I for one have have swapped up most of my day-to-day -day apps with Google Apps. Um, we've been saying for 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 months now, maybe a year now. Uh, the Google apps have looked nicer, have played nicer, have been a better design. Has Apple uh, really caught up with them now? Are they at least on par with them now with this with this much of a change for their own apps? I think saying caught up, because I bet within Apple there have been multiple attitudes. Mm -hmm. And so it's not so much catching up as... Like the war is now, the power has shifted to the design, the people that like this one style of design. And I bet the same is true within Google, that if people liked the other style, you know. So to say it's caught up, it's just, I think everybody, there are, things tend to kind of, kind of like what I think what Norm was saying, things tend to drift in a direction, they trend in a direction. Mm -hmm. And then somebody does something different, it feels either fresh or retro. You know? Exactly. I, and, and really, and I think I mentioned this on the show previously, um, it really feels like as we, as we got, actually I think I was talking to a student last week about this, um, as we got better resolution of screens and everything, we wanted everything to pop out of the screen. We wanted shadows and, 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 and bevels and, and all this kind of stuff. And now that we've gotten to that point and we have these crisp, super crisp screens, now we want to flatten it out. Is that That's funny. Is that is the, have you ever think about it that way? Like it feels like like okay, we're 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 done proving we can make things look like they're bubbling off your page as much as possible because we have this resolution. Now let's step back and actually think about how it looks when we do that kind of stuff. I think what, that's part what, of I think the I animation. Th oh you go ahead, Norm. Sorry. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, what I think about that is it's, you know, we do have that resolution. And so this flat design is going to let um, the, the video and photos are going to are obviously taking over uh, in you know, our da daily communication. So this flat design is going to enhance the way our photos look and not. Um, I don't know, it, it's it's it's, it's going to make that experience better because um, you don't have to worry about looking at the the resolution of like the frame it's just going to be there the frame's just going to be a flat frame and so your, your the photos and the content are going to stand out better because as the network get better um you know the photos are going to just get better the resolution is going to get better i mean it's already pretty good <laughs> i mean i don't the, the, the new phone is already really good so um you know, we'll see. I think that's part of it. And so the, the graphics will be transparent. They're going to try to get to these user interfaces that are so smooth and natural that you don't have to think about, you know, what button you have to press. You just use the device. So I think that's more of why this flat trend is, has really been embraced mm -hmm. um, to enhance the to enhance the content and how people are using it. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, has anybody had a, a family mothers fathers whatever uh, uh uh upgrade theirs have you have you seen much of a what the heck is am i doing with this thing kind of reaction from it um i've only well, seen a little I, bit my mom is going to get one she's mm -hmm. we're going to get her a 5c but so last night when i was very excitedly got home <laughs> with my new phone um <laughs> and i showed her my new phone and my old phone and i said see how different they are she held them both in her hands and she said they seem the same <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And they are. They are kind yeah. of the same on the outside, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And she has a BlackBerry, which she's given up on uh, at this point because um, it's just so old, well, poor old thing. Cause... And, you know, it can't do any of this stuff. And she's got iPads, and so she's used to the general iPad interface. Yeah. So she's going to be uh, fine moving into this. But, but you know, to, to the normal human eye, even this flat versus the, you know, skeuomorphic versus whatever – 
you no, know, they aren't really. I think we sound like a whole bunch of picky nitwits, you know, talking about it that, to the detail that we do. Although, of course, we're right. <laughs> oh, I mean, we're we, we're the, we're the, definitely the higher end of this stuff. I mean, you know, we're talking about you know moms and kids and teenagers. They're all going to get their five C and they're going to be fine and they're going to complain about they can't figure out where search is because you missed that one tool tip at the beginning. Because I'm one of those that missed the tool tip that says pull down from the center for search the first time you try to you know slide to the left and mm. and it's not there um but yeah I, and i think i i you know the way they're they're going to market this 5c um uh, are for the people that you know want iphones but don't really give a, a crap about what's under the hood right um and and we're the ones that are going to be going 5s and and you know want the more power you know although i know you know in my case you know missy was upset she couldn't get the blue one in the four or 5s you know uh, but mm. it, they've, it's like they've iPodified this thing, and I think it's going to uh, help them sell even more of them. It doesn't seem like it's last year's phone for 100 bucks. It does still feel like it's something new. Um, I saw a lot of... Uh, yeah, I saw a few people, in, uh, definitely in the Verizon store later in the day, asking for the 5C uh, and asking what colors they were in. So, um, And notice that they, you know, and they, they've been really tough about this before. They never split up the iPad. Uh, sales when they released the mini. Um, so what was it? Nine million iPhones over the weekend? Oh, that's a good question. Probably yeah. almost every single one they could ship. Probably. <laughs> uh, I mean, right off the bat, no golds. Like like a few minutes into it being be getting started online, golds were uh, back. Or what? Two to three months at this point. Um, oh no, I don't think it's two to three months. It, I think it, it's only is one it month. weeks. It's weeks. I know it's weeks. I've got a friend who works for Verizon, and it's a couple of weeks. And people are flipping out, don't get me wrong, but yeah. it's a couple weeks. Yeah. It, it is terrible to wait for your phone. And I don't sure. even know too many people that could find a silver. Like, everybody I know, I'm pretty sure, got the space gray. Oh, there I was definitely want a guy the gray with one. silver at the store when I was picking mine up. There was definitely a guy silver. getting his set up when I was there. Excellent. Um, so I, you know, it, it could have been a, it could be a supply thing, or it could be. Uh, I, I don't, I don't buy. I think they did it on purpose. There's no way they didn't no. do that on purpose. Really? I, yeah. I don't really buy into this. They, they manufactured uh, interest in backups and lines on purpose so much. I kind of think it's a, it's People, a. That's all they think about all day is how can we be better. That's all the, that that's their entire job. They've got they probably got one guy thinking about what can we do to get that extra one hundredth of one percent of interest, you know? Interest in lines and and the media was out and, and I know with the line I was in for the whole ten minutes or they were Annie Ann's was passing out pretzels. I, I came back and there was the big coffee machine uh for uh, presumably free coffee for everybody that was sitting in line. So I mean it was I didn't expect too much to be honest, like in my neighborhood. Um, but they definitely, they definitely got it. And the news was out. I did, I did a tweet that morning and say, is anybody really lining up for this? So I did a Twitter search and, and saw news talking about it. I saw pictures of that looked pretty much, you know, at least like, you know, similar lines than what we saw. Uh, suppose there was somebody that sat out there for two weeks or, or had somebody sat out for him for two weeks at the New York store. Um, I was just looking that up. Somebody made a documentary about it. I'm going to see if I can find it, and I'll put it in in the notes here for you. Sure. It was it's crazy. Some they they waited a long time. There was a huge line at that and, store. And some of the discussion is like, why are you still lining up for iPhones at this point? It's been how many years? You know, is it really that much excitement? I think the general excitement all around has waned as other people go Android. Everybody, you know, you know, some people think, well, there are other phones. Why am I going to deal with this one? But I think it's the same mentalities of Mac versus PC as well. Like, why would I pay that much for that? I can go get a PC for half the price, you know? Um, I, I and, and so that's disseminated, but I still think the fanboys are the fanboys, and the fanboys are going to show up that first day, you know? Um... Mm -hmm. And it was kind of interesting. Well, I think that the not the lack of pre-orders was basically built to build up the lines. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because it was the only way, right? Because if you pre-ordered a five C, you got it that day, I believe. Yeah. So. I think you're right. Uh, and the only ones I heard that they had trouble uh, that they 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 put on back order at least after the first day of the five Cs was the yellow yellow one. So hmm. something so much about that. The yellow, or people are, want to be something cheerful. It's very sports car, isn't it? They want to stick out. They want to, They want. They want their their phone to scream. Here I am. Um, so Cindy, what is this you have about FaceTime audio? 
uh, so there is a FaceTime audio. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you can, um, so what, when Apple first introduced FaceTime, they went video. Mm -hmm. But it would have, obviously, it would have been easier for them to start out with FaceTime audio. So the thinking of it is that by doing video, they were differentiating from Skype and other things. So being able to say, okay, so this, so FaceTime is the experience of talking from phone to phone, but with your picture. Mm -hmm. And so now they've introduced an audio version of it. Basically, you know, so the point is that from phone to phone, you can have a phone call without using a phone carrier. As long as you're on your wireless or even on your carrier, but you're not using your phone time, you're using internet time. So I, I don't know whether this is interesting. I mean, I think it's interesting, certainly. Um, I think it becomes a little bit like the iMessage versus a regular SMS. You know, yeah. do you, yeah. does it offer slightly different functionality to you? Does it get to people faster? You know, I, th I think that would be part of what would be interesting about it. But more to the point, you know, eventually we're back to that thing where that Vonage had where you don't really need to have a phone contract. You just need to have be connected to, a, you know, a wireless, the same way that Skype is. And you don't even need your Skype subscription anymore now. You can just talk to anyone that's got a, a, a Mac with FaceTime or an iPhone or anything. I, I think that I think that's the biggest part of this uh, is now all those kids that have iPod touches and they get that's on right. Wi-Fi can call mom, you know, can call grandma. Um, yeah, I, I, and that's the biggest thing with FaceTime. There was some discussion today of, like, well, who's really using FaceTime and all this kind of stuff? And, like, well, you can use it because, you know, Skype takes up your battery if you want to have that on for the same kind of function. Um, I, th I really think FaceTime is that thing where it works when you're, you've, <laughs> you've made your family or your family already has bought into the entire Apple ecosystem. And as I say multiple times, in my case, uh, all of our parents have it. My my brother has it. Uh, my my I think my sister has it now. My nephew has it, and now we can all use iMessage and FaceTime and everything. So why would we use something else at this point, right? Because I don't need to explain to my mom. Go download Hangouts. It's so easy. Look at this. But that go download it is the first step to it not working for the normal person. Mm -hmm. Versus this is an extra button when I pull up my contact for my son, and she did it. I think almost by accident to me the other day. You know, like that's how easy it is. And that this, this audio, I think that really breaks it down when we start thinking about like, I was looking at my bill, like, do I really need extended nights and weekends? We have so many rollover minutes. Why are we bothering with all this stuff? You know, and to do this instead, I think that's that's a pretty good consideration for, for, you know, making that go a little smoother. What I wonder, too, is you remember when when iPods and iTunes first came out, they were only available on Apple machines. Yeah. You can run iTunes on a Windows machine. So there's precedent for suddenly they'll make FaceTime available on a Windows machine. There is, and there was the promise of making an open standard, which they're several years out from breaking that promise. Um, so I wonder about that. Maybe they're like, eh, we'll give it another year. Do we really need it? Like, it's, just, it's a killer feature for their phones. And again, I think it, mm -hmm. like the iMessage, it makes you say, because that's one of the reasons we, that, that is a specific reason we bought iPhones for the in-laws because they didn't have service. They're on Wi-Fi and we're like, well, this iMessage will work. They can text us when they're sitting at Wi-Fi at home with no phone service because they're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I think that's happening more often than not. Um, it, it's another reason to, like, for the tech, the, the Apple fan people to say, hey, look how easy it is, you know. So, um, yeah. no, I think this I is love iMessage on the uh, desktop, too. I mean, I yeah. use that constantly and, and I, I want that service to uh be on every device i it's a it bugs me that i can't just type to text message you know people who are on verizon or who have androids yeah or even just a bridge over to sms right yeah like wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be something i think well obviously hangout does it maybe not hangout specifically but like you could do it with like google voice and everything so so why not i mean remember like i really replaced the chat app that was like AIM and Yahoo Messenger and everything just looked like their Apple interface. So and it is so handy to be like, you know, especially working at your laptop and pull it up and, you know, texting your wife, you know, it's 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 tremendous uh, for that that kind of thing. So, um, all right, Norm, what do you got here? Which one of these stories do you want to bring up first? Yeah, I was trying to uh, Rick roll the podcast here and bring in an Onion article. 
but uh, we'll just skip that. Uh, <laughs> Netflix Gas, I, uh, if you, you want know, to look that up there. What's that? Netflix Gas, if you guys want to look that up. Net- Netflix I think that's Gas, the most yeah, awesomest idea. That. I mean, they're, they're almost there, right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, that's how we all consume Netflix anyway. So mm-hmm. I, want the, I, want the, I want the direct line in, though. Like, I want to just an IV Netflix in. That hey, way I can watch thing, multiple man, shows Netflix, simultaneously. To get Netflix on glass, I can just be walking around watching my Breaking Bad, you know? Um, don't know which I'll react to. You won't be able to. to tell the reality from, you'll be like shooting people. You'll be defending yourself from meth heads right in front of you. Oh, don't yeah. don't be around me when Walking Dead gets put on there. <laughs> well, actually, you know, I brought in some other articles that were that are interesting, but uh, it really my my thing right now is podcast Pittsburgh. We're less than two weeks away, and uh, we we've, we've made a lot of changes this year from what happened from last year and pod camps before. We're only going to be one day. We're we're focused on um, you know trying to just keep uh, not get too stretched out. You know, I think you know last year you know the second day, you know we we got. We just weren't able to keep things as um, you know as tight as it could have been, and so that's why we're just going to try to see how it goes this year. One day, one really solid um, block of events, one party, and that way people don't feel like they have to dedicate their whole weekend to pod camp. Um, it, the events changed. You know, it used to be uh, all of us just getting to know each other for the first time. You know, talking about what tools you're using, you know, to create your show. Um, or whatever your blog was, you know, just talking about your blog, talking about whatever project or hobby or thing you were trying to figure out. Um, that's just not what PodCamp is now that we have all these tools and you can just Google whatever you need to know about how to, you know, create a podcast or what technology and hardware to use. Uh, so we're so much more, it's like you can't escape like the marketing side of it, you know, and uh, I'm doing these um, promotional podcasts on the PodCamp Pittsburgh website. And I, you know, I had a conversation with David Suedo last week and he basically said you know it, you could have called it podcamp for twitter uh in 2008 or podcamp for facebook you know when facebook you know made went public and uh even as they do pages and that sort of thing so like whatever is the flavor of the year um in terms of like what's hot in technology and social media um seems to be what gets focused on and of course we have you know people covering some some basics in terms of there you are mike uh, we did an episode with you last week and uh right. And uh, so uh, then I'll just talk, well, wrap it up by saying we're trying something new, trying something fun, because that's what PodCamp should be is fun first. Uh, we're we're going to, we just launched this, we just announced this this afternoon, and Mike Munz is kind of spearheading this, so you can hit him up if you have any questions. But win a free VIP uh, ticket to PodCamp by um, doing something creative and fun with, uh, you know, Instagram or, or Vine or Snapchat or I guess you can show the world with Snapchat, but you know what I mean? Do something fun and creative. Uh, let us know it. how, how you're coming to pod camp and what you're excited about. And, uh, you can win a free VIP, uh, sponsorship. And if you already are signed up for a VIP, we'll, we'll refund you. So go ahead and sign up as VIP. And then when you win, you can get your, uh, you can get your money back. So yeah, that's pod camp this year. Awesome. So we're excited about it. October 5th is the date. Uh, it's free to register. So just go over to pod camp. Pittsburgh.com. I don't know what happened to his feed there. Oh, no. <laughs> mid mid uh, mid mid plug. So maybe dropped off. He'll come back. Uh, there you go. Uh, no. Well, I was going to ask him what the theme was of the sessions, but you can see uh, I, I'll be the, we'll be doing awesome cast there again, like we have in the past. Um, and and uh, yeah, I'm actually going to try to do a session on on Google Glass and let people try it out and talk about like what this means a little bit of wearing both computers, which really does kind of lend into the social media aspect we last w- talked last week about eye beacons that is apparently part of the new ios and then this is really kind of your tag walking around we talked about before about like the uh the alibi right you know imagine you t- you walk into a hotel and it's going to let you know you know it- it's going to tag hey you were here you know or maybe automatically check you into four square or whatever you have it set up for um it- it's a it's a pretty interesting idea so we're going to try to have fun and have a good discussion about that um but yeah looking at it real quick i mean it looks like you know definitely uh, uh they're doing another social media in the media which was really interesting last year um a couple other sessions uh, uh piqued my interest when i when i looked it over real quick so um yeah uh it, it, it'll all be videoed uh we'll, we'll probably have it streaming and uh now i'm getting the messages that uh that his network's down so now they know they know nobody somebody doesn't want podcast to go down here so so what else we got here um have you tried itunes radio at all 
You know, I did. Um, I uh, I've been because I the first thing, you know, it kind of reminded me of what was it? Ping that they had on iTunes a yeah, little while back. Yeah, the social network. Oh, and I, I couldn't turn that thing fast off, off fast enough. Yeah. But so yeah. iTunes Radio, my initial reaction was no, 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 go away. Um, and yet. Uh, accidentally, I turned it on, and I thought, eh, I'm going to look around a little bit. Today, on the drive to uh, on my drive down to Pittsburgh, uh, my iTunes radio, because I'm also trying to figure out Siri. I'm like behind everybody on this, but I've never figured out Siri on my iPad, um, and so I'm putting in a little bit of a push to make friends with Siri. Um, and so Siri turned on uh, not just iTunes radio, but iTunes radio, the disco channel. This turns out to be <laughs> the perfect drive to work music. Absolutely. I have never had more fun. I'm boogieing down, uh, you know, I-79. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah, I tried it a, a, a tiny, tiny bit. I'm a Pandora user. I pay for it. Uh, the yearly, what, 36 bucks a year, I think it is. Um, and it seemed at least on par a little bit. I didn't see any ads yet. Is, oh, I got an ad. You got an ad? Like, what are what are we getting for ads on this thing? Because I know Pandora, it was just like, I. they were got to the point where it was... The, the commercials are kind of getting as bad as radio. So I was like, well, that's enough. I'm going to put my money down. I'm cool with it. I want to support it. Okay. So this was, um, this was the ad was clearly you're one of the first users of, you know, iTunes radio and you'll want to know about. <laughs> so it was a little bit Apple arrogant, if mm -hmm. you will. You know, it was kind of like, you know, you're as cool as we are. Thank God you're here. But um, it was a car. It was an ad for Nissan cars and this new model of Nissan. And it was sort of a – it was one of – it reminded me of very, you know, like – when television first st started, how they'd have like a talk show host talking about a product, you know, Groucho Marx or somebody like talking about <laughs> soap or something. It was it had a feel a little bit like that. Yeah, I guess and the big question is, I mean, it again, you, you had to come up just like playing with Siri, you know, that's how mm -hmm. easy it is. Uh, we talk about the FaceTime thing. I mean, this is the thing that I think, you know, everybody's going to stumble on, you know. Um, so, but so that's, that's, it was after probably a half hour of using the thing. Yeah. So, uh, and it wasn't, it was just the one ad. So it was different from radio ads where there's like ad after ad after ad, at least right now. So it depends on, you know, if you, if you watch, like I'll sometimes watch TV shows on the channel, on the web page for that TV show, just because I need to get, need to get a fix or something for it. And those ads are really desperately annoying. And this ad did not have that same level of annoyance. Good. So it may just be early days, and they don't have enough advertisers yet to make it stink, to make it stink. But or they may be taking a different approach. Yeah, I, I was wondering if it would if, if they would even lighten the ads to begin with, especially this first push to get people into it. You know, because mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you don't want to be just slammed with ads like you know, as everybody's introduced to this. Um, I. I think it's a good thing. I think it's, um, I, I think it, yeah, I think Pandora and Spotify should be worried um, mm -hmm. because how many iPhones are out there and how many people are listening to Spotify, Pandora on, on, on an iPhone. Um, I'm not worried to the point, like, I don't see, just just for a couple little things that I wouldn't be moving. Um, Pandora already has all my stations that I've fine-tuned, you know, um, and I'm rediscovering all the stations with the shuffle feature I just discovered like a month ago. Uh and I can listen to Pandora way more places than I can iTunes Radio. Okay, but so they, again, it kind of related to that topic that you and I were saying, the, the things we've talked about earlier, how maybe you know we as a group are a different kind of users. When you first, I don't know if you, this is going to show up, but you know when you first turn on iTunes in iOS 7, the very first button to the left is iTunes Radio. That's true. And then it's songs and artists and albums. And it took me a couple of minutes because I had originally rearranged those to be more like how I want them. And I thought, I definitely want that iTunes radio not on the front page. I want to come choose to go to it. So I, after a little bit of working, I figured it out. No, no normal people are going to bother or even know that you could do that. And so they're going to get hit with iTunes radio every time they turn on iTunes. Mm -hmm. How much of a, a push is it going to be for them to buy, like to sell music too? So that's maybe a one way they can get away with selling less ads. Yeah, every song, every song you look at right at the top says you can buy this one from. Now, from yeah, and is now. it going to be Kindle, uh, accidental buy, easy to like purchase everything, or is there are they going to? Only if you're using like, your fingerprint. If you're using your <laughs> fingerprint. <laughs> That's the so you can accidentally bump a song and you just spent you know, 
a dollar. Let's see. I just put... well, the fingerprint is only on the button at the bottom. It's not uh, doesn't do touch screen on the top, as far as I know. So for, you have to touch the top to say, yeah, I want to buy this, and then you'd confirm it by pressing below. So I don't think you could buy by mistake. Yeah, if I, I can pull it up here. I'm sure it's touch simple though. You can't really see it too well, but it, it's in that top. It, this is one of the things about the fine lines of the new, you know, look. Is it, it's right at the top there, above your artwork and everything. All your controls are at the bottom, so it's separated pretty good. And, and pulling it up, um, it says buy song. I hope I don't actually buy this because uh, I really don't want rat lay it down. And yeah, it comes up. <laughs> oh, this is this is the first time I've seen this. Is when you buy something, it says scan scan fingerprint or enter password. So there you go with it linking to your uh, right. fingerprint, which is kind of. Well, you cool. can't accidentally stop, download stuff, and you know the current. Or at least you know the legacy app store or anything. Yeah. Even free stuff, they make sure. you verify. So, yeah, it, it's the same. Well, kind and of on process. this, you, you can in the settings turn off the thumbprint to buy feature. Of course, if you're worried about it. Of course. So I I think that's a great thing for um, like if you have kids and stuff, making sure you don't have to like have a password and they figure it out or something. That I think they work through the uh, uh, buying things. You know, uh, buying the hundreds Murf berries and, and and racking up dad's credit card thing. Um, so, so I, I think I think that helps out, you know, for a lot of the reasons that we talked about before. Um, Cindy, you, you could be for the Guinness Book of World Records of like person, who, the first person to buy everything in iTunes Store. <laughs> that would be cool. something that they might want to encourage. We talked about gold iPhones before, but but Cindy, you have something else that's gold. Yeah, for for the oldies in the room, um, I came across this link today. Uh, through Koodle, they always find interesting stuff, that before there was a gold iPhone, there were gold-plated go- Walkman. So, uh, and there's, and what's funny is, you know, you think, okay, they made 12 of these. No, no. No, no, no. They, they're all different models. The there's Iowa. just lots and lots of gold Walkman it, out there. And it comes with a leather, leather uh, uh, pouch to put it in, and... <laughs> Well, it's actual gold. I mean, it's not like, you know, champagne colored. Oh, wow. That's amazing. There's even pictures of here them opening it up, it looks like. Is that? Oh, wait, is this where the tapes go? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. There you go. So, I mean, it's not solid gold. It's gold plated. And if you, but if you scroll all the way down, there's, it's not like one kind of Walkman. There were, a lot, there were different manufacturers. There, I believe Sony and uh, 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 Iowa and a bunch of others. Oh, there's the actual Walkman Walkman. Um, right there. Right. So. so the thing I think maybe this stems from in, in Japan, there's definitely a, a, they are a level beyond kind of consumer culture than we are and status, you know, status devices and stuff. Um, that's where the Walkman comes from. So, uh, they, they want to show off things, I guess, or did at the time. And gold is the color. I mean, there was a pretty good discussion about, you know, you think about it like in China, like if you have white and black iPhones, that has a whole different meaning. You know, because because both have pre foreboding meanings in in that culture, so and I guess you know, you know, gold is pretty important to them. So, all right, we uh, we've talked a lot about Apple devices, but there was something announced, something very exciting from Microsoft. Has anybody anybody followed this at all? No. Nope. Does anybody know what Microsoft announced? Did anybody know there's an announcement from Microsoft? Um, I heard that Microsoft shouldn't have announced something. Oh, is that it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't hear what it was, but I it's, heard that they shouldn't have done they, it. They have week. another Surface, of course. Um, you know, they released it about the, the last one about a, a, a year ago. So they're about due. Um, so they're on an Apple-like product cycle here. Um, it's going to start at $499, features a 1080p display, 25% more battery life. Of course, we are talking about... Oh, God, there's audio. Surface Hello. Um, I think we're talking about... Are we talking about the Pro? Lighter. I don't even know if we're so talking about the Pro now. You're just calling it the Surface 2. The integrated kickstand now supports two positions, so you can lean in. It comes with free um, cloud Work storage, play, um, up to 200 gigabytes of free uh, SkyDrive storage built in, which is real. That's really kind of nice. I've been hearing really good things about that. Uh, I think that's a really smart move because, like, the thing that always becomes cheaper over time is storage. So yeah. why not just, you know, spend a little money now when you know, as a business, that that storage is going to be cheap in a couple years? And you think I, the, I think that's a good investment. And, and these things, you know, these things don't have hard drives. They're SSDs in these things most likely. It's flash memory. 
uh, or flash hard drive storage, you know, however you want to, you know, think about that these days. Uh, if you really want this thing to compete with an iPad, compete with something like that, it needs to be something like that. But it's so expensive to do that on board. You throw the stuff up in SkyDrive. I think that really kind of offsets that idea of, oh, I really need a bigger hard drive. You know, um, I mean, they're doing they're making the right moves. The one of the interesting things they added was a new keyboard. Uh, you know, they have that detachable keyboard kind of situation going on. Um, apparently, the new keyboards actually have a battery in them, and they're a little thicker. Mm, that's smart. So, so they're not just the pad. Um, so it's going it, to, yeah, so it'll, it'll add on your battery life, which completely, um, that was, looks like that was a Surface RT. They don't call it the Surface RT anymore. It's just the Surface 2. So, and then they, of course, are going to have a Surface Pro 2. Um, well, this is going to get confusing, isn't it? Surface 2 and Surface Pro 2? Oh, yeah. I, it, you know, it makes more sense than RT, probably, in the long run. Um, oh, and there was a promise of Facebook apps coming soon. Because they don't have that yet. Um, which is a problem if you're, you're on the RT versions that don't have, like, a proper desktop and, and everything. Um, and, and you got to think, like, you know, you're... There's a touch interface, and to have to go to the web versions of everything uh, that aren't really, you know, modified for it could be. Um, it, it, the company says it's faster than 95% of Ultrabooks on the market. Are we still selling Ultrabooks on the market? I thought those died off. <laughs> Is that still a thing? Um, especially for 500 bucks starting? Are we... Did, That's a or maybe I'm That's thinking netbooks. Funny. Am I thinking netbooks? Or, I think you're thinking netbooks. I think which which netbooks. are ultrabooks? Are they the are they like? Am I thinking MacBook Airs? Is that an ultrabook? Like like these? I don't know of anything that's called ultrabook. <laughs> so, I think that's a class. It's not a product. Somebody made it up. Somebody made it. I, yeah, yeah. I understand. It's like it was like a line of like these are our ultrabooks kind of thing. I mean, there must be like the super thin but a little more expensive versions of everything. Yeah. I, I guess. Do you remember you, there was a there was a Japanese um, live action superhero Ultraman that terrified me. They would show him <laughs> after school, um, right after Spider Man. I love Spider Man, but I had to turn the TV off immediately afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah. So so Surface Pro, Surface Two. I, I I'm more interested. I want to see what uh, Chilla thinks of these because he's one of the guys that jumped right on that very first Surface RT. Um, and he actually just picked up a, a laptop kind of tablet situation. He, sh he showed up here, showed off here on the show. So I, I like to see his thing, see if it solved uh, most of the problems they had with the Surface. It's still it's great if you're if you're bought into the whole idea of Windows and the new Metro interface. I think this is a great device. If you're gonna go with something like this, you might as well go you know full in into it. Get Microsoft's version of it. I'm kind of thinking of the Surface like I think of. Um, you know, Android and the Nexus line. I feel like if you're getting an Android device, you have to get a Nexus line at this point um, because all the crud. You know, anytime I talk, start talking to somebody about an Android phone, they end up telling me about the things that suck about it. And usually that goes down to that carrier stuff with the operating system. Um, like, this is this is a trend. You know, this is, I'm trying not to be biased. This is the, where the conversation ends up. Um, I think this, the Surface really demos nicely. I mean, it really it looks. It, it looks really sharp, and I like that they have rethought, you know, they've come up with different interfaces and, and pieces where they're not imitating, they're trying to do something different. Some mm -hmm. of it looks really, really good. It's just that building the whole ecosystem of, a, you know, all the different apps and, you know, a developer base and Servers, crash, trying to do things like Facebook having to develop for different platforms, that's just always hard. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, and, and even, like, the, the phone, I, I, I still think the phone is a really good-looking phone. It just doesn't have everything on it that everybody wants. So, I mean, that, that's hard. Uh, Netflix. Anybody, anybody, are you guys Emmys watchers? Emmy watchers out there? Only if I'm, like, chained to a chair. But I am a really <laughs> huge, huge fan of House of Cards and Kevin yes. Spacey. Yes. He's, uh, he's House awesome. of Cards wins, I think, three Emmys. Uh, they received a total of 14 nominations. Uh, uh, well, that's for Netflix. Uh, nine of those nominations for House of Cards alone. 
Um, they won. Do, 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 they won best draw, uh, best directing in a drama series for uh, the episode chapter one, and won two Creative Arts em Emmys for outstanding casting and outstanding cinematography. Um, what was the other one that won? Was it? Uh, da, 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 looks like. No, I am a Grove. I, I'd imagine. I, I was actually kind of surprised that we don't have Orange is the New but Black uh, in on this, too. But uh, I don't think it was out in time for the season. That's probably it's it. Just, so you might see some of that thing. next year. Um, but hey, is, this seems like kind of the justification of Netflix. You know, as I like to say, it's the next HBO. You're going to get it for these series, you know? Just like I was, you know, finishing up watching the newsroom on HBO or Game of Thrones. Uh, House of Cards is the next. You know, I don't know about Game of Thrones, but it's the next, I don't know, Boardwalk Empire, maybe? Well, did you, I don't know if you happened to watch the, the speech that Kevin Spacey gave, not, um, when mm -hmm. was it, like a, two, a week or two ago, talking about this being the future of television, not television and not of movies, but this new merged media, um, which, you know, uh, and his point was not that online delivery is the thing or that binge watching is the thing. I think that the most interesting point that he made was that going direct to web like this or, you know, dealing with somebody like Netflix as opposed to dealing with HBO or any of the major networks or any of the cable networks is you don't have to do pilot season. Yeah. And pilot season is very wasteful. And so if you have a television show and you have to do a pilot, you have to like cram so much into it that you kind of ruin your story. And with House of Cards specifically, they didn't want to do that. They wanted to have a lot of late reveals in episode six. And you, th you know, you think of a show like uh, Breaking Bad, where things change so radically later, but it, but they and they were still able to craft a pilot that was compelling. Uh, but what if they couldn't? What if what if that would have ruined the story to have done that? Mm -hmm. well, so thing, so you, that's what they're you pushing mentioned Breaking for. Bad. I think the interesting way that this Netflix thing has changed that there was some talk uh, from AMC a few weeks ago as well that they change the way they think about the ratings for the shows because these ratings have grown and grown and grown for these shows the interest has grown and grown and grown for these shows because of this binge watching nature how many people caught up on breaking bad on one of these video services because i think it is available on netflix and amazon prime and other places people catch up and get interested in word of mouth and it grows bigger and if you let it go because ratings aren't so hot the first season or two that never has a chance to happen so that's right well the other piece that i mean when you think of the the usa networks that pick up shows that were f like first on a, on a main major network and then they kind of pick them up and not quite in syndication mm -hmm. but sort of like they're going to have like the repeats of them that has also served that same purpose yes but you don't have the on demand and you don't have the binging experience and that which netflix or hulu or whoever could offer yeah exactly Exactly. Um, the other interesting thing is, I, I thought this was an Onion story too, Norm, uh, when I first saw it. Uh, but apparently Netflix has a tool that will uh, keep your Twitter feed safe from Breaking Bad spoilers. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, going into it, uh, I, I didn't look too much into like technically how this goes. Um, but what the finale is saying here, according to The Verge, um, uh, fortunately, Netflix has a tool that makes Twitter a safer place. Spoiler, foiler. Uh, you go over to the site, log in with your Twitter credentials, and you'll see a pretty standard view of your stream, except any tweets that mention Breaking Bad are blocked out. <laughs> so guess, they, they want you to log into their site to, to view your Twitter streams? <laughs> I, I, I think it's the usual log in with your Twitter to attach the app and everything. And actually, here it is. And apparently this is only set up for... Um, this is only set up for Breaking Bad. <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. You know, you know some guy just made a joke about doing that and everyone in the room was like, oh yeah, let's do it. <laughs> but I mean, that's amazing though. So if you're, if you're catching up on Breaking Bad, you don't want to know what happens... Um, oh wait! It, oh, this is interesting though. I I I I didn't realize the the connection on this one until I looked at this. If you look in the corner, notice it says final seasons on Netflix, UK and Ireland. So this is a pretty good ploy because if you're you know think about it, like I see this even when I have Amazon Prime and or if, or I'm sorry not Prime but there's a few seasons I've started purchasing 
and so I get them the next day. Like I was avoiding the uh, the burn notice spoilers on Twitter, not nearly as big and prevalent as Breaking Bad, I'm sure, uh, but still pretty significant uh, until that next day where it was available on Amazon Prime, and we both got home from work and we were able to watch it and and you know see for ourselves exactly what happened. Um, it, 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 this is a pretty cool way to solve that problem, and a pretty cool uh, marketing uh, 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 trick on their part. So, uh, yeah, I, so is someone? Do you think someone will make this more generic so you can put in your list of shows that you're addicted to and unable to watch? Because that would, then you I'm could sure. just have it be on all the time. Yeah, Amazon. Let, should, Amazon should do let's this. Let's call Owl Lab right now. What's that? Let's call Alpha Lab right now. Let's get it. There started. you go. Let's put our application in to make this uh, for real for everybody else. I'm sure there's a patent on it. So, all right, guys. It's, it's been a blast uh, talking tech with you guys. Uh, Cynthia Klosky, where can people find you? Anything you want to plug? Anything coming up? I want to put in a plug for PodCamp Pittsburgh, too, because it's going to be awesome enough. It needs uh, doesn't need even to be plugged, but I just want to say I'll be there. Awesome. Awesome. And Norm? Hulesman, it's all pod camp all the time. Unless it's some other. I'm podcast. in the zone. I'm You're... in the zone. Yeah, pod camp's gonna be awesome this year. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks, Cindy, for uh, for using your plug on pod camp. <laughs> uh, and we did play. I did, I got. I we got an extra plug in there while you were while you were offline uh, for pod camp as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll be there. We'll be doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, we're the Sorgatron Media is uh, uh, supplying cameras. Um, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so join us there. Say hi to us, uh, and go what learn about you, social media. Renting that Google, will you rent the Google Glass for like five dollars a fifteen minutes, or how are you gonna wow, how are you gonna a, share that equitably? That's not a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> here, I've been giving it away for free. Um, you see my, I you see my video of the guy on the Segway. I got to wear the Google Glass. It was the perfect mashing of two technologies the other day. Um, it was uh, that was a little bit of the future that you were able to to present to us. Now we know what the future will look like. Yes, yeah, security guard with glass on his face on a Segway rolling around the mall. This is the future, ladies and gentlemen. It is now. Uh, it was Robo Focop. Robo Focop. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. He had a little thing hanging out of his ear. I don't know what that was for. Maybe it was just an earpiece. Maybe it was <laughs> something else. Um, you can tell us your theories on that over at Aus- not awesomecast sorgatronmedia.com is where the show is uh, drop us a line at contact at awesomecast.com at awesomecast on twitter we'll see if that doesn't break the system when I pop that up again um, google plus facebook look up awesomecast there as well so you can uh, join us in the conversation on all the cool tech things going on and you can join us here live every tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com Thank you, uh, thank you, Norm. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.